What's up, TRC fans? Don't miss our upcoming event, TRC Street Kings at Palm Beach International Raceway. driving today? Well, my foot slipped off the clutch back there. Yeah, What's up guys, it's Chris with TRC with another feature and it is a sick one today. Turbo LS wagon. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. station wagon uh, it's got a iron block LQ4 uh, 6 liter the LS6 intake uh, comp custom grind cam it's uh, 228 236 on the duration uh, 588 601 on the lift uh, it's got a VS racing 7575 turbo as well as their wastegate and blow-off valve um, it's got a custom cold and hot side fabricated by me um, short runner on the intake because uh, there's no intercooler um, the exhaust was uh, cut from a mandrel bent walker piece that uh, I got from a local auto parts store. It's all controlled with a GoFast Bits GeForce 3 boost controller. All of my tuning thus far has been done by KK Performance. Stock crank, stock pistons, stock rods. Um, it's got a trunnion bearing upgrade, LS6 intake. It's got Snake Eater Performance 1500cc injectors in it. It is running flex fuel E85. It made about 509 on pump gas on 10 pounds, I believe, and uh, 709 and 715 on E85 at about 70%. And that was running about 15 and a half pounds. It's 
got a Lingenfelter two-step on it. ECM that I redid the wiring harness on and it's all done through mil spec connectors to the firewall. It's got a Tech Performance T56, got an MGW shifter in it, monster single disc uh, clutch and flywheel. It's got a Granny Speed Shot Hitmaster clutch slipper system. This helps alleviate some of the shock to the drive line uh, being a stick car as well as helps improve uh, 60 foot time. Um, it's got a dynamic drive line here. It's got a Ford 88 rear end. Uh, it's been narrowed about three and a half inches. It's got uh, 410 gears with the uh, factory Ford track lock. Uh, it's got custom rear brake calipers that I made uh, for dual rear calipers for a staging brake. It's got the uh, regular Toyota leaf springs and the uh, factory Toyota style shocks. The front undercarriage is all Nissan S13. It's got narrowed lower control arms to match the AE72 chassis. Um, factory S13 knuckles. It's got a Njuku 5 lug conversion for the front wheels. Uh, it's got CX Racing coilovers uh, with the AE72 top hats. It's got an Aeromotive fuel cell and A1000 pump that's been modified to uh, use the factory fill door. The car has weld S77s all the way around. It's a 17 by 6 in the front. I'm unsure of the offset as they're custom built for the car. Uh, it's got 15 by 8 in the back with a 6.5 inch back spacing. Um, it's got some Yokohamas up front and Mickey Thompson ET Street R's in the back in a 275-50-15. Uh, some other custom parts on the car. It's got a Griffin custom built radiator. Today? Well, my foot slipped off the clutch back there. <laughs> you know, if I would have gave it a little bit of gas, that so was probably my fault. On here and everything, you don't normally drive like that. Uh, not on the street, no sir. Put his hat back on. He's coming back. Oh, come on! Don't have that ticket thing in his hand. There's your license. Thank you. Just a warning, okay? All right. Thank you, Jesus, for that. I cannot believe you got a warning, dude. Yeah, so how long have you had this thing? Uh, I've had it for about three years now. Uh, built it in a year, naturally aspirated six liter. Uh, drove it for about two years in January of this year. I uh, took it back apart for the turbo build. Uh, finished that in about three or four months, doing all the fabrication myself. Yeah. 
valve. It's uh, from Granny's Speed Shop in Washington. Uh, basically, a hydraulic control valve that I can adjust down here, allow the uh, clutch to slip as much or as little as I want, just to kind of help relieve some of that force from the drive line. Allows me to still run uh, drag radials yeah. on a stick car. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see when you get that dialed in, man. That's gonna be sick. That's gonna be nice. So, what would you say is like your uh, like your favorite thing about it? Like at this point, like I know it's probably changed, but it's my favorite thing about it is just no matter where I go, whether it be driving it around, car show, taking it to the track, it always garnishes attention just because it's different. Uh, yeah, you don't see it, man. Yeah, not a lot of people dig up old 80s Toyotas and modify them. I mean, when they do, they're usually on a drift circuit. Yeah. And, and they kind of get beat up. This one is is pretty beat up for just you know 35 years of life, but. Uh, it's got that, but it's it's like that natural age. Like it's not right. fake patina. It's, it's just literally the perfect balance. I mean, and you literally got this out of somebody's back or front yard. So about four years ago, I noticed on my way to work every day that there was a, a TE72, which is the body style before this one. Uh, really, just the headlights change. I was sitting on the side of the road, and I was talking to a buddy of mine about wanting to buy it, and uh, we went back and forth so long about it that he kind of threatened me that he was going to go buy it if I didn't. So I immediately left work that day and went over and talked to the, uh, the owner and uh, bought it from him and started building that chassis and kind of got in over my head with how extreme I was wanting to, to get it and, you know, uh, was driving down my road one day less than a mile from my house and actually found this one, just looked over and it was sitting in the guy's yard. Um, so I went back and, and talked with him and he was actually about to scrap it. So he said, man, you give me what scrap price is, you can have it. Googled how much it weighed, multiplied the price times the scrap price and got it for a hundred dollar bill. So when I got so deep in the other car, um, I learned a lot. And this one, I brought it up to the shop, blew it completely apart to where it was just a shell, um, put it on a rotisserie, stitch welded it from front to back to really give it some strength. Um, it had, a, had to have a custom built transmission tunnel. The firewall was still stopped, um, but the extra width that it took to fit the T56, I had to kind of split the carpet. And I, I'm working with a guy right now to try to get a good custom fit carpet for it because they're just not very easy to find old Toyota carpet kits. So one of the questions that I get asked quite frequently is when I'm gonna paint it. I do work in the paint and body industry, but my goal for the car never was to have it be pretty. It was totally functional. I built the car to drive. It never was a drift car or a drag car. It was a driver. I wanted something that I could hop in, go get the groceries, cruise around town, take it to the drag strip, have some fun. And it's just kind of evolved into more of a race car. So, um, you know, it's got dents, it's got dings, it's got a hole in the driver's side door. And I always tell people that if I fix it, then how is the water gonna get out? <laughs> custom painted and powder coated by myself. I've had an instructor when I was in college that uh, one of our first assignments was to uh, build a four inch cube out of foam core board and have absolutely no glue showing, no edges. And that was to teach you craftsmanship. So when you look underneath the hood, when you look underneath the chassis, it is, uh, I tried to be as thorough as I could to make it clean, simple, um, just because that goes a long way. Craftsmanship is something that you don't see a lot. It's only been to the track once since it's been turboed. Um, it ran low sevens in eighth mile, naturally aspirated, but I'm hoping to carry those sevens onto the thousand foot, which is all we have here locally. A question I get asked all the time is why I chose the Corolla chassis. And my response is always, well, how many of them do you see driving around? And it gets people thinking, uh, it's a pretty rare car, so that's what makes it a little bit more unique than uh, a lot of other things that get turned into project cars. Before I had the turbo and stuff on there, I went up to the local gas station, had it weighed, 
20 gallons of fuel and me in it weighed right at 2,800 pounds. So I'm guessing the turbo and all the accessories added maybe 80 to 100 pounds. Light car, big motor, good combination. Feature plans for the car is a water to air intercooler. The intercooler's got just enough room to fit up front and I'll put the ice box around back. Also, uh, putting a cage in, uh, I get a lot of questions about how safe it is to drive. It is sketchy, it's 36 years old and uh, that definitely needs to be there for safety as well as give a little bit more rigidity to the car. I have plans for building some other cars and I'm on the search right now to uh, find the, ne the next chassis.